Good morning. Because the Brazilian real was the strongest FX currency from the emerging markets in the past year and the Mexican peso has closed at an all-time low this week, everybody who comes from the United States and pays in US dollars can buy a Big Mac at McDonald's in Mexico at $2, while the same Big Mac costs $5 in Sao Paulo. So there's border tourism and border shopping going on between the United States and Mexico. That is something that is comparable to the Swiss franc and Germany. They also go um, shopping or the, the Swiss people go shopping in the Bodensee area because the euro is so weak and the Swiss franc is so strong. So there are real, um, real developments behind what uh, Trump might do next. The Federal Reserve has also some, some eyes on Trump and the uncertainty coming from what he wants to do. So yesterday the Federal Reserve, so that was in the minutes, has been written in the minutes um, from the last meeting in December where the Fed actually hiked rates again. And the Fed presidents there said that the, they fear that there might be a growth overshoot by those fiscal stimulus uh, programs from Trump. And this might actually also hinder German government, uh, the German government from doing more uh, in regards to um, investing in infrastructure. Um, right now, the German government is consuming a lot because of that Black Zero that we have. So German government actually has windfall profits coming from the low rates from the ECB. So we right now do not have any um, losses in the in the government uh, coffers and uh, but we're not investing it and one argument for explaining why we don't or why the German government doesn't do it is they want to prevent an overheating of the German economy which is quite uh, strong already in the United States the same is uh, the same counts the United States economy is quite strong the uh, labor market is relatively strong um, we have rising inflation expectations already. And that is what the Federal Reserve yesterday said. They fear that with Trump, if he goes into that relative strong growth and um, puts in place some infrastructure programs uh, on a large scale, there could be overheating and that should be prevented. And so the Fed could hike rates faster. And if you, if you compare Donald Trump to Ronald Reagan, who was uh, president in the 80s, um, the debt to GDP ratio back in Reagan times was 30%. Today we are, are near 109%. Um, and so inflation could spike fast if Trump uh, isn't doing the right things. And yeah, but... If you look at the markets, we are at 105.53 for the euro dollar, so we got a weaker US dollar in reaction to the Fed minutes, so nobody really believes that the Fed is really going to hike rates very fast, or there might also be some profit taking after the dollar rally in the past days. So there is still a lot of uncertainty um, regard, in regards to um, Trump. Another development which is of note is that the LIBOR rates have gone above 1% again. That was the first time since I guess the year 2009 or 2010 that the LIBOR has gone above 1%. The Fed, I must say, is quite slow to follow that market reaction on short-term rates. They are below that, of course. And uh, yeah, there, there is some real economic uh, results and um, yeah, developments and something, yeah, results are coming out of that. 20% of the US mortgage rates are coupled to the LIBOR. Um, private US student credits in the United States are coupled or um, but they, they go with the LIBOR. Um, and so now that is above 1% again, means that the next mortgage rates and student credit uh, payment uh, for, for the yield on that credit will be higher and that means that uh, it's very probable that the free income, this uh, free disposable income of US consumers is going down and that might be also detrimental for growth in the coming weeks and months in the United States.